Welcome to my continued coverage of ions, molecules, and atoms. In this video, we will learn atomic symbols, atomic mass, isotopes, and atomic weight. Are you ready? Let's get started. So we use abbreviations called atomic symbols to describe elements. Here's the symbol for magnesium. It's Mg. And we have some numbers here written to its side. So the atomic number, which in this depiction is this number 12 written at the lower left, corresponds to the box in which this element appears on the periodic table. So magnesium appears in box number 12. The atomic number is always the same for all elements with the same letter symbol. In other words, all magnesium atoms or elements have an atomic number of 12. The atomic number is also equal to the number of protons, which means that all magnesium atoms have 12 protons. The number of protons in a given element never changes. If I changed the number of protons, I would actually change the element to a different element, which is mighty difficult to do and does not normally happen. So the mass number, which in this depiction is the number 24 right in here, can change for different atoms with the same letter symbol. The mass number, as it turns out, is equal to the atom's number of protons plus its number of neutrons. Hence, a magnesium-24 atom has 12 protons and 12 neutrons because 12 plus 12 is 24. However, not all magnesium atoms weigh 24. As it turns out, some magnesium atoms weigh 23 and some weigh 25. A magnesium-25 atom has 12 protons and 13 neutrons because 12 plus 13 equals 25, while a magnesium-23 atom has 12 protons and only 11 neutrons because 12 plus 11 is 23. Now remember, the number of protons always, always stays the same, but the number of neutrons can shift. So you might ask, how can some magnesium atoms have 13 neutrons while others have 12 and others have 11? The answer is isotopes. And what are isotopes? Well, isotopes are atoms that have the same atomic number, but different masses. This happens when two otherwise identical atoms of the same element, of course, have different numbers of neutrons. So remember, protons do not change across different atoms of the same element, but their number of neutrons can. For example, most carbon atoms have six neutrons. We call these carbon-12 or C12 atoms because they weigh 12 AMUs, because six neutrons plus six protons equals 12 AMUs. And carbon has an atomic number or number of protons equaling six. Other carbon atoms, however, have seven neutrons. These are called carbon-13 or C13 atoms because they weigh 13 AMUs. We would say that C12 and C13 atoms are different isotopes of carbon. Same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons. Now, all of these, of course, have the same atomic number, which is six, and the same number of protons, which is also six. If we somehow changed the number of protons in a carbon atom to be seven, then it would no longer be carbon it would now become nitrogen. You see then we cannot change the number of protons in an atom without changing its identity to be that of a different element. Now to atomic mass versus atomic weight. So carbon atoms that have just six protons and six neutrons, of course, have an atomic mass of 12, which is six plus six. Now most carbon atoms are of this type. Some carbon atoms, as I just mentioned, of course, have six protons and seven neutrons, which means they weigh 13. These atoms are called carbon-13 atoms. An even fewer number of carbon atoms have six protons and eight neutrons. These are called carbon-14 atoms. So if you look at the periodic table closely, you'll see that the atomic mass listed for carbon is not 12 or 13 or 14. It's this number down here, 12.0107. You might ask, why? What does that number mean? Well, as it turns out that this number, 12.0107, is a weighted average that takes into account the relative amounts or percentages and weights of how many carbon 12s, carbon 13s, and carbon 14s there are in the world and universe, all squished into one number. This overall weighted average is called the element's atomic weight. We would say then that a carbon 12's atomic mass is exactly 12. A carbon 13's atomic mass is exactly 13. But carbon as an element has an atomic weight of this number, 12.0107, which again is a number that is a weighted average that takes into account all of these different isotope masses along with their percentages. So how do we calculate these weighted average or atomic weights? Well, if we are given the natural abundance percent of different isotopes of an element, as well as each isotope's individual atomic mass, we can calculate the element's overall atomic weight. I'll show you how to do this with the following problem. The element X has three naturally occurring isotopes 
The masses in AMU and percent abundances of each of the isotopes are given in this table. The average atomic mass of the element is how many AMU. Now, if you already know how to do this, you're welcome to pause the video and try this on your own. You can then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. To do this problem, what we're going to do is focus in on these masses in the rightmost column. We take each mass and multiply it by its percent abundance and then add them all together. For example, the first mass up here is 220.9. We take 220.9 and we multiply it by its percent mass, 74.22. However, we have to express that in a decimal percentage. So we actually have to take 74.22 and divide it by 100. So we take 220.9 and multiply it by 0. 0.7422. See, this is a decimal percentage. It's the percent divided by 100. So this takes into account the fact that 74.22% of all of the atoms of element X weigh 220.9. Make sense? Now we aren't done. Again, in order to calculate the overall atomic weight, which is a weighted average of all of these different percentages and masses, we have to continue down the line. So we now take the next isotope mass, which is 220.0. We add it to what we have so far and multiply that 220.0 by 12.78 divided by 100, like that. See that? Then we do the same thing with our final mass here. 218.1 multiplied by the number 13.00 divided by 100. If we add all of that stuff together in our calculator, it gives us this number. That is the averaged mass that takes into account each of these individual isotopic masses and their individual percentages of abundance in nature. Now, in order to get the correct answer, we have to use our significant figure rules, which we learned in an earlier video that I'll link to in the description below and do our appropriate rounding. You'll notice that each of these individual mathematical manipulations are multiplications. So when we multiply all of these through, we have to round the resulting number from each of these individual multiplications to have the same number of significant figures as whichever of these terms has the fewest number of significant figures, according to our multiplication division rule. Again, link to in the description below. Now comparing all of these terms, you can see that each one of them has four significant figures. So if you rounded each of the individual products here correctly, you would get four significant figures in each of these terms. You'll notice that each of them is separated now by a plus sign. So we have to use the addition subtraction significant figure rules, which says that we have to round our final number to have the same number of decimals as whichever term had the fewest number of decimals. And as you scan across all of this, which of these terms would have the fewest number of decimals? Yeah, it's all of these terms that are the individual masses and they only have one decimal. That tells us that our final answer must be rounded to have only one decimal. Which of these numbers down here is the correct answer with only one decimal? The answer, of course, is option B. So this is how you calculate an atomic weight from individual atomic masses and percent abundances.